Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina wa qa'idina wa qurrati uyunina sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma iftah alayna futuh al-arifin. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana ya arhamar rahimin. Today insya'Allah. Allah, we will talk about Nusaybah bin Tuka' bil Maziniyya al-Najjariyya al-Khazrajiyya radiyallahu anha and Sayyiduna Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiyallahu anha. So who is this lady who was one of the early women who converted to Islam? Uh, she was with those who Uh, stood fast on the day of Uhud. She was of those who witnessed the battle of Khaybar. She was of those who witnessed and participated in the conquering of Mecca. She was in the army which went to uh, to Yamama fi uh, Yamama when they went to to fight those who apostatized from Islam. This is Ummu Umara. Ummu Umara. Her name is Nusayba, and uh, she is the companion, the female companion, who witnessed all the event with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She's a blessed woman a blessed companion. She was very honored in her uh, tribe and she she was born in uh, Medina and her tribe is Banu Najjar who are the uncles of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, um her her uh, path started with her husband uh, Sayyidina Zayd ibn Asim and her two sons and her sister when they they came from Medina to Mecca to uh, to swear an oath of alliance to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to show him that they will Uh, give him, they will uh, give him victory and be with him, uh, stand uh, still with him. And they were ambassadors from their uh, tribe. So, subhanAllah, Nusayba uh, radiyallahu anha, when they finished uh, this journey, they came back to Medina. And Nusayba came back with the, the, the group to teach the women about the new religion, to teach the, uh, the women about the new teachings of this religion. So she, uh, she lived her life supporting and uh, uh, going for jihad for the sake of Allah. And if we stop for a minute here, Jihad does not only mean fighting in battles. No. It means uh, jihad nafs is a jihad. When you fight against your nafs, it's jihad. Doing anything for the sake of Allah that the nafs does not like is a jihad. So, Nusayba, Uh, was uh, a leader in Bani Najjar and uh, she was very honest, she was very loving to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Later on, when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, all the houses became his house. And especially the houses of the uh, tribe of Bani Najjar. And of course, we know that 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, settled in the house of Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, who we are going to talk about next, inshallah. So Umar Umara was very happy with the teachings of this new religion. Her house was full of light because of the nur of this new religion. And she was always urging the Muslim, the female Muslims, Muslim women to, to seek knowledge, to, to learn about Islam. She was always teaching them to, to be with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was urging, urging them uh, to, to, to seek what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam orders uh, the, the woman to do. And as we mentioned, she witnessed all the events with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'm going to mention a few of these events. So when uh, people... Uh, uh, went to fight uh, for the uh, battle of Uhud. Nusayba radiallahu anha, Um Amara participated in this battle. She was with a group of Muslims, of females, uh, who were uh, carrying water, food. Uh, they would serve the uh, soldiers. They would uh, look after their wounds. They would take care of this uh, of those who got sick or who got uh, uh, injured in the in the battle. And at the beginning, the uh, battle was in favor of the Muslims until until the the archers went down, thinking that the battle ended. But after that, this victory was changed to a, a loss, a big loss for the Muslimin, for the, for, the, for the Muslims. So some of them ran away, some of them uh, were scared, but a few group uh, of companions stood fast and they formed a shield around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of their bodies and of their weapons. Uh, uh, they, they wanted to protect Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umm Umara was one of those who defended Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time. So she would, she would look at him and she would say, Ya Rasulullah, I would sacrifice myself for you to be safe, Ya Rasulullah. So Nusayba, Umm Amara, was uh, fighting and uh, she, was, uh, she was defending Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she was injured so badly in that uh, battle. Not only her, but her son also, Abdullah, got wounded and he was bleeding so, so, so badly. So the, his mom, immediately when she saw him, she immediately took care of his uh, wound, of his, uh, uh, and of his bleeding. And she said to him, hey, go, get up and fight for the sake of Allah. Get up and defend Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was looking at her and he heard what she said to her son. And he said to her, who can do what you are doing, ya Umm Amara? What made Umm Amara sacrifice herself and sacrifice her family for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What what was that in their hearts that urged them to do so? It was the deep love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was the true, sincere love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they knew how they were hun they were very sure that Allah will protect him, but they the, even though they defended him. 
and they got wounded for 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 uh, to save him so where are where are we on this path of love how can we get to the level of those companions of those female companions who did what they did for the sake of Allah and for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam There are there are many steps that we can follow that we can that we can uh, uh, do to get our hearts connected to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there is a special dua for that ya allah sal qalbi bi qalbi habibik al mustafa oh allah connect my heart to the heart of sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we say there is a dua uh, it's it's sending salawat to sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but with the intention that our heart is connected to his heart and our soul is connected to his soul so we say allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima salatan tasilu qalbana bi qalbih wa jasadana bi jasadih wa ruhana bi ruhih salatan tasiluna bi rabbina this is what we want when we send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We want our heart to be connected to his heart. And we know when he was asked about taqwa, he said, "At-taqwa ha huna, at-taqwa ha huna, at-taqwa ha huna," and he pointed to his heart. So we want our heart to be connected to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So to get from this taqwa, to get our share from the taqwa of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the taqwa that would lead us to the high heavens, to be connected with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be reunited with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the day after. So send salawat, read his seerah, Read the seerah, read his bio, read his what he did, read what the Sahaba did. And teach your kids about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of these will make us on the path of love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And make lots of dua. Dua is very important. Do not belittle the power of dua. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell him, Ya Allah, we believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We haven't seen him, but we love him. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to get us closer to him. We ask you, his companions, in the day after, Ya Arham al Rahimin. We ask you to reunite us with him, Ya Allah. We ask you to gather us with him under the banner, under the banner which he is going to hold in the day after, Ya Allah. This was the love of Umm Umara Nusayba, who, who was fighting and does not care whatever happens to her. She was surrounding Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with her family and the few, com- uh, the few companions who stayed fast on that battle. And at that time when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw what she did, he said, Barakallahu alaykum min ahli bayt. May Allah bless you, bless your family. So she was ready and she did she was sacrificing herself for the for the sake of allah to protect to protect sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when it was so tense she looked at sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she said to him ya rasulullah ud'u allah an nurafiqaka fil jannah Ask Allah so that we will be with you in Jannah. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma j'allum rufaqai fil Jannah. Ya Allah, made them my companions in Jannah. 
This is what we want to be his companions in Jannah, inshallah. So when, when Nusayba heard that, she said, Whatever happens to me in this dunya, after this dua, I would never care. So this was during the battle of Uhud. In the year six of Hijra, the Muslims went out to do, to do Umrah. So they, they went from Medina to Mecca to do the Umrah. But what happened? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an to negotiate with the non-believers. So they kept him there for a few days until the companions thought that he was killed. So the companions gave the pledge to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under the tree under the tree that we are ready, Ya Rasulullah, to fight for you, to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said, and the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Holy Quran when, uh, when he said in Surah Al-Fatih, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ فَمَنْ نَكَثَ فَإِنَّمَا يَنْكُثُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا عَاهَدَ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهَ فَسَيُؤْتِيهِ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Indeed, those who pledge lines to you, Ya Muhammad, they are actually pledging lines to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were really doing an alliance for you, but they are doing it with Allah. So those who, he who breaks this, his words only break, breaks it to the determine of, to himself. And those who fulfill that, what he has uh, promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will reward him highly. So what happened after there was, uh, uh, they, they agreed on something, and that was Sulh al And the next, uh, so the the uh, the point that they agreed upon is that they would go back this year and they would not come and they would not do the Umrah. And imagine how heartbreaking this is for the Muslims who were uh, six years away from from uh, Mecca. They longed Mecca. They loved Mecca. So they they came back. Until the next year, that was Umratul Qada, and Nusayba was one of those who came to do this Umrah. So, this was the second event. One more event that I would like to mention, of course, I'm not mentioning everything that she attended, but a few, a few events. It was Fatah Makkah the conquering of Mecca. And that was in the year eight of Hijra. So Nusayba was there with the, with the 10,000 Muslims who came for to conquer Mecca. And they witnessed how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them victorious. They witnessed how the idols were uh, broken on the uh, broken. They witnessed that. And they witnessed Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying to those people of Quraysh, Izhabu fa antumu tulaqa. Go, you are free. I'm not going to punish you. And this was one of the reasons that most of them be got into Islam. What is this religion? 
that will will make the Prophet forgive after all the bad torture they did to the Muslims. So this was uh, the conquering of Mecca event. And later on, uh, after the conquering of Mecca, there was uh, the Muslims heard that uh, uh, the tribe of Hawazin is uh, gathering so many, uh, a big army to fight the Muslims. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions went to fight the Muslims in Hunayn. And Nusayba, Umm Amara was, was with, the, with the army. So in the army, in that battle, subhanAllah, uh, the Muslim were victorious and Nusayba witnessed that. Later, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, predestined that the Muslims are going to fight Musaylam al kazzab who proclaimed prophecy. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent uh, uh, Umm Amara's son, Habib, to Musaylam al kazzab with a letter. And Musaylama read that letter. He turned to Habib and he said to him, do you witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? And Habib said, yes, I do. Then he said, do you witness that I am the messenger of Allah? And Habib said, I don't hear what you are saying. So to punish him, Musaylama was cutting his uh, parts of his body part, part, part until he passed away. And he was a murderer for the sake of Allah. And in Medina, the mom was suffering for the death, for the death of her son. But she was at the same time happy that she is a mother of a murder. But she decided, she decided to take revenge for her son and for her religion also. So uh, shortly after Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, but Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq sent the army of Usama bin Zayd to fight those who apostatized from Islam. And we mentioned that when we talked about uh, our, the companion Zayd ibn al-Khattab and how he killed al-Rajjal ibn Amthawa and how they were victorious and that, that trend uh, was... Uh, uh, gun for so that uh, uh, during that battle what happened Nusayba radiallahu anha um Umara was fighting with sword with the sword with the men and she was killing this and that and she did not care about anything that would uh, happen to her because she heard the good news from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, Allahumma j'alhum rufaqai fil jannah. And she said, I won't care any, about anything that happens to me in this dunya after this. So she was fasted, she stood fast on the, on the battlefield and she was wounded over 12 wounds and she lost her hand. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it coolness of an eye for her that Musaylam al kazzab was killed, that one who claimed, who, pro, who claimed that he is a prophet, and that the Muslims were victorious. And she came back. She came back to Medina, and 
every now and then Abu Bakr radiyallahu an would visit her and would check on her to see how she is doing and uh, to see how Umm Amara, uh, the one, the female uh, uh, woman who came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Uhud and he said, whenever I turn right or left, I will see Umm Amara fighting, uh, defending me. So this is Umm Amara, this is her story. And it gives us women the strength that whatever is, uh, whatever we can do for the sake of Allah, we should not hesitate to do it. Be brave. Raise great kids to be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do everything you can to prove your love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we move now to Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, and we all know this name. His real name is Khalid ibn Zayd. And uh, he was one of the helpers of al-Ansar. We all know that at the beginning when uh, Sayyidina Muhammad got the message, he was calling it to Islam in secret. He was calling those who he trusted very, very well and uh, his family members. And they were all gathering and meeting in Darul Arqam ibn Arqam, ibn Abi al-Arqam. And they were learning about Islam in Darul Arqam. So Darul Arqam was the first center to call for Islam so people can come secretly to learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was called the Darul Islam. So now if we move on from Mecca to Medina, have you ever heard in Medina about a house that is very close to Al-Masjid al-Nabawi, to the mosque of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That was the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. His house was so important. It wasn't less in importance than Darul Arqam. Why? Because both houses, both uh, houses were considered as centers for people to meet. Darul Arqam in Mecca and Daru Zayd, uh, the Daru Abu Ayyub al Ansari in Medina. So his house was the center in Medina that people would come to meet Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and to learn from him. We all know the story of the migration of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr from Mecca to Medina. The people of Medina, and at that time it was called Yathrib, Yathrib. So the people of Yathrib would go out to the, to the outskirts of the city just waiting for Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم. They know that he left Mecca and he is on his way to Medina. They were so happy to see, to, to know that he is coming, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is coming to live in Medina. So they would climb the palm trees and they would sit there waiting to see the shade of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, from far away arriving to Medina. So, their great deep longing to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made them wait during the uh, heat of the sun, made them wait on the burning sand 
waiting for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was, he was delayed and the companions were always going from the beginning, from the early morning, early dawn to wait for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they will go back um, during the noon time because of the excessive heat. So every day they would go wait and come back. Until one day after they came back home, one person cried, Rasulullah arrived, Rasulullah is here, the messenger of Allah is approaching. So everybody, all the all those who were Muslims in Medina rushed to see Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Muhajireen who migrated before Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the helpers, the Ansar who were, who, who received the Muhajireen, they all went to see Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They all got out saying, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And they all had this, the very well form, famous song, Tala uh, al-Badru alayna. So Yathrib was filled with excitement, was filled with happiness. Everyone was delighted to see Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Everyone was very happy to see them safe after the, this very long journey. And since that day, the name Yathrib was changed to Medina. And it would be a sin to call Al Medina Yathrib after that. So Al Medina, uh, before, before the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad, وسلم, it was called Yathrib, and there was a plague, there was, it was, uh, there was drought, and it wasn't a pleasant place. But when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, came, Everything changed. It became the most pleasant place. It became the best place. It became the best blessed place because of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam arriving there. So Al-Ansar, the helpers, all of them rushed. They wanted to have the honor that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam would stay in their, in their, in their houses. And they would, they would beg him, Ya Rasulullah, stay with me. Everyone would come to, Ya Rasulullah, stay with me for, for as many days as you want, for as, as long as you want. And everyone would be shouting, Ya Rasulullah, stay with me. Ya Rasulullah, choose me. Ya Rasulullah. But what was the answer of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said, let my she camel Go freely. Allah gave her the order where to stop, and the place where she, where this camel will stop, uh, uh, will be the the place where our mosque will be built. So that she camel was controlling the whole situation. And everybody was following this camel until it stopped at the place where Bani Najjar are. Bani Najjar are the uncles of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the uncles of Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that was the place where Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built the mosque and the houses of uh, his wives were, were, uh, were built in the same place. So 
See, when that, uh, when the she camel uh, uh, kneeled down, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, Ayyu buyuti ahlina aqrab? Which house of our companions, of our relatives, is the closest to here? And here comes Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiyallahu an. He came delighted, happy, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, it's my house. This is my house. And he carried uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stuff. He carried his stuff. Sayyidina Abu Ayyub carried the stuff of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his house. He was he was so thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he was the chosen one. And he, he was so eager to serve Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Ayyub says, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into my house, we have a lower level and an upper level. So Sayyidina Muhammad wa, uh, chose the lower level. And me and my wife, Ummu Ayyub, were in the upper level. So one, one uh, night, he was... Uh, walking in the room in in the upper level and he said to his wife we are walking and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is below us we are on top of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they uh, chose a corner and stayed there until the morning Abu Ayyub stayed up all night and he came in the morning to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him to switch to the upper level. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, no, Abu Ayyub, the lower level is more convenient for me and also for the guests who come to see me. So Abu Ayyub uh, accepted. Uh, it was a very good convincing reason that Abu Ayyub radiallahu an had to obey Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day he was with uh, his wife and uh, the water container broke. So he got uh, uh, the blanket, the only thing that uh, was in the room, and they tried to dry the water, in, fearing that a few drops would drop on Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that would bother him. So again, he went back to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot live up and uh, upstairs, and you are downstairs. And he kept begging him until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agreed. He had good manners. All the time that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the lower level, Abu Ayyub and his wife were not happy with that. So, uh, Abu Ayyub served Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His wife would cook, would cook the food and would get, uh, would, uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Ayyub would take it to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he is done, he would, they would get, uh, Abu Ayyub would get back the leftovers, whatever is left of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they would try to get the traces where his hands, his blessed hands were, and they would eat from that food. One night, they sent him the dinner, but uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not eat anything. And Abu Ayyub went to him immediately and he said, Ya Rasulullah, bi abi anta wa ummi radatta asha'aka wa lam ara fihi mawdi'ayatik. Ya Rasulullah, you, you sent back your, your food and I did not see that you, you even uh, ate from it. 
وكنت إذا إذا رددته علينا تيممت أنا وأم أيوب موضع يدك نبتغي بذلك البركة. And I always when you would send the food I would I would uh, uh, tra- uh, look for the traces with my wife trying to get the blessings the baraka. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inni wajadtu fihi riha hadhi al-shajara." وأنا رجل أناجا أما أنتم فكلوا. So I smelled garlic and I am a person who is being revealed to. Jibril visits me with revelation. So I cannot eat from that garlic. From the garlic, it has a smell that might uh, that might not be pleasant to the angels. But you can eat it. So they ate it, and they never used garlic in their food. So Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, I mean, in while preparing the food for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam stayed seven months in the house of Sayyidina Abu Ayyub until the the uh, the mosque Al Masjid al Nabawi uh, uh, was built and uh, the houses of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were for each of his wife and of course we mean uh, a room for each of his wife was built also. So he moved to. Uh, that area. Seven months, Abu Ayyub radiallahu an hosted Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in his house. He was being revealed to. Quran was being revealed in his house. So many people visited this house, whether from helpers or from immigrants, from uh, the uh, muhajirina or al-ansar. Angels surrounded that house and were in that house. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam planned the base for the new society. And all of that happened in the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. So Sayyidina Abu Ayyub always cared for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He witnessed the events with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one time it was the uh, uh, battle of Khaybar. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had Ummul Mu'minina Safiya, the mother of believers, Safiya radiallahu anha. And there was a tent put for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So during the night, Abu Ayyub was up all night carrying his sword, protecting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and going around the tent, going around the tent. So when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam woke up, he said to him, what's going on Abu, Abu, Abu Ayyub? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I, I was scared of your wife. You killed her father, her husband, and her people, and she is a new, a new Muslim. And I was scared she, that she might do something, that she might harm you. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, made dua for Abu Ayyub, and he said, Ya Allah, Allahumma hafaz Abu Ayyub. Ya Allah, protect Abu Ayyub as he was protecting me during the night. We all want to be like Abu Ayyub. So Abu Ayyub uh, was always, always careful and caring uh, and protecting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So once uh, we know that uh, Sayyidina Abu Ayyub 
who attended the events with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when, after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also participated in the, uh, with the armies going to fight for the sake of Allah. And in one of the battles, he was going to, the, the army was uh, heading to Constantinople to fight the Byzantines. And on along the way, he, he, he was sick and he knew that it's death. So he said, if I die, then bury me in Constantinople. So he wanted to, to be buried there. And he said before his death, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling me, لا يدخل النار أحد قال لا إله إلا الله. No one who witnessed that there is no God except Allah is going to be in hellfire is going to be forever in hellfire. Whoever, whoever says la ilaha illallah will end up in Jannah. And we know the so many narrations uh, that talk about the virtues and the merits of saying la ilaha illallah. One of them that uh one one uh one person was uh, his deeds were scaled and uh the uh right deeds and the left deeds were equal and suddenly the uh, the, uh a paper of la ilaha illallah was put in the scale of the good deeds and it was so heavy that that person believed in la ilaha illallah. He said la ilaha illallah. He had la ilaha illallah as his dhikr. And that saved him. وكانت هذه كانت وصية. So his, uh, it was his uh, will that he will be buried in Constantinople. So they did. So now, whoever visits Istanbul, Turkey, go and visit the grave of uh, Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. So when, uh, when after the companions buried Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, uh, some, some righteous people of Allah came to them, the people of Turkey, the people of Constantinople, they came to them and they said, يا معشر العرب قد, قد كان لكم الليلة شأن. Something happened to today. What, what happened with you today? And Yazid ibn Muawiyah was the uh, commander in chief of the army. He said, "Mata, mata, rajulun min akabiri ashabi Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." One of the greatest companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away, and we buried him here. So they built a white dome over over his grave, and they lit some lanterns. And people always visited his grave. Until today, people would go and visit Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. And at that time, if they were, if they had any drought, they would, they would uh, uh, ask Allah to for rain because of this great companion, and they would have the rain. So when the uh, Ottomans uh, ruled Turkey, they built uh, a great mosque over there. And in that mosque, all the Ottoman caliphs were given the pledge in that, in, in that uh, uh, mosque. 
So don't forget to visit Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari when you go to Istanbul. This was our session for today. And we, inshallah, will meet next time, next week, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.